Hello, I'm Sandy Fritz, Chairperson of the Shrewsbury School Committee. Students and parents are justly proud when they progress from high school to college. The Shrewsbury School System is also proud that about 95% of our graduates enter a college or community college upon graduation. But what if this is not the best path for a student? One size never fits all, and we know that approximately one in five of our graduates who enter college fail to graduate in six years. We also know that some who do graduate find themselves in jobs for which their degree was not needed. Do we need to rethink the expectation of college directly after high school? Should we be educating parents and students more about other options? In this episode of School Talk, committee members Dale McGee and Lindsay Heffernan speak with two past Shoesby High School graduates about their experiences that led them on a different path. They also speak with Mr. Jeffrey Turgeon of Mass Hire regarding job opportunities that do not require a college degree, and Dr. Jane Lazotte regarding what the district is doing to highlight other options. Welcome to School Talk. This is a special edition of School Talk. We plan on taking a very close look at the goal we've had over the past of moving nearly all of our students on to college from high school. Perhaps there's a better path for, for many of our students and we'd like to consider the pros and cons of that. This session has actually been recorded over many months uh, with many different interviews and we will be weaving them together with our comments as we go through. We'll begin this with a remote interview of 2011 Shrewsbury High School graduate Taylor Buell who will join us from Toronto. Taylor, why don't you tell us uh, your story? How did, it, how did things go? What did you do after high school? Well, uh, originally from high school, I joined what's called a upgrading course. So it's basically, we refer to it up here as grade 13, uh, where you go back and upgrade any courses that you felt like you could have done better. Uh, in high school, I find that, you know, our maturity level isn't there to, you know, complete at the best of our abilities. Uh, so I went back as also as a buffer because I didn't really have a major or a, um, a field that I had particularly chosen mm -hmm. at that time so uh, I decided to go to an upgrading course and from there I went to a art school for film uh, but about halfway through my program I decided you know this wasn't really for me and I was uh, leaning more toward the uh, the workforce rather than continuing on through a to finish my post-secondary uh, schooling and then uh, from there I worked uh, jobs ranging from retail, food service, uh, maintenance, and to where I ended up now today as the uh, training coordinator for Mensis Aviation, which is a ground handling company at a Toronto Pearson Airport. Uh, and there we handle multi-million dollar contracts with Sunwing, WestJet Airlines, Interjet, Air France, KLM, uh, all these things here. And it all started from Shrewsbury High. <laughs> Now you, you, we talked before and you made a very interesting point. You said that you were always taught to pursue your passion and your passion you felt was in the field of art. But once you actually plunged into it, you learned something different. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, so they, there's the age old adage of uh, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life because your field isn't hiring. <laughs> and I felt that that was, uh, you know, really, through when you get out there and I had to make you know the adult decision and identify that you know maybe my passion is more of a hobby rather than a career and it comes down to you know uh, as I got older I started thinking about family planning and what I wanted to do with the rest of my days and you know in order to pursue what I wanted to pursue it was to focus on a job that could bring in more net worth immediately Mm -hmm. um, now, there are extremely beneficial fields in media and uh, film production, but just with my timeline and my timetable, it didn't match up. Yeah. And the, the other piece that, that you alluded to is, is you got a job that had room to move up. Absolutely. So, um, especially in my field now, there's so much opportunity for, uh, for there's so much verticality. In the sense of, you know, without a solid university degree, I was able to, you know, climb the ladder to 
lower management and now in middle management. And I'm actually now being prepped and groomed for a position as a regional training coordinator for uh, my entire province Mm -hmm. of Ontario, which is, you know, really interesting and really unique. And um, that is all from not having a degree. Now I'm reaching now a point where I am seeing a glass ceiling where there is going to come to a point where a degree is required you know on the corporate level they say we need somebody with a degree in management which i don't have but what's nice is that my the company i'm working for now offers kind of like compensation for pursuing those um extra you know university degrees or credits and all that stuff and they even have a uh, bursary program um if not all of your education training so it does exist out there it's very difficult it's very competitive but you know if you can get into a company that's willing to support you like that it's it's amazing Mm -hmm. so so it seems to me that one of the distinguishing characteristics here is that a lot of people get an education and then look for a path after that and and it sounds to me like what you did is you found a path and then are focusing on the necessary education uh, to advance along that path. Absolutely, and you know, um, what I really wish to impart upon other people is don't assign yourself to the highway. You know, there's side roads, and back roads, and you know, there's a thousand different ways to get to where you wanna go. And you know, there even are in the situations where you know, the roads don't exist. And from that adversity, innovation blossoms and blooms, right? Uh, entire industries were created where people didn't follow the path right where they Mm -hmm. didn't go from Mm -hmm. high school to university or didn't graduate university and have created empires based on that core principle of you know there isn't just one way you know there's a thousand different ways to cook an egg right but you know some work out better than others but you know in the end result is still the same success is not measured upon degrees on the wall but you know satisfaction in the heart yeah can I ask you to help take us back to your, you're in a really good place now, but let's go to your 17, right? The 17 year old self. And what was the environment like for you as so many of your peers, I'm guessing, were thinking about college and were preparing themselves and were talking about it and that next step. And maybe what was going on in your head at that point in time as you're thinking something different might be my next step. I'm imagining there are high schoolers in this position now. <laughs> so t- tell us a little bit about, help, help the, the viewer understand what that experience was like. So for me, I always felt in high school that everybody got the instruction manual and I didn't get a copy. Oh. Where I felt that everybody had, you know, the idea, they knew what they wanted to do, they knew the steps mm-hmm. to take, and I was here lost. And mm-hmm. I would look to the, you know, the guidance counselors in my school are so amazing in the sense of, you know, they, they try their best to give every student a piece of their time, a piece of their day. But, you know, my graduating class had 200 plus people in mm-hmm. it, right? There's only so much and so many people that you can get to in a single year, right? There's not even that many school days in a year, mm-hmm. right? And to be able to sit down with somebody for a day and say, hey, this is how your life is going to go, you know, maybe, but then... You know, things every yeah. uh, the best well laid plans diverge immediately. So for me, how I was feeling at 17 was, you know, lost. I knew college was a thing. I knew that that's, you know what, this is what everyone's doing. So that's what I have to do. And that was basically it. It wasn't so much what's the next best step for my life, but how do I fit myself into this mold? But I found out that that mold didn't fit me. And it just, it was bending myself into all these shapes that I just didn't feel that I wanted. So one of the things we think a lot about today is how do um, young people have sort of the, the supports to make big important decisions? And I'm wondering if there was anybody either in the schools or maybe you relied on people in family to, to make some of those decisions? Or do you have any suggestions for us as a community about how we make sure that you have the adults you need around you to make big important decisions and everyone isn't, isn't sort of put to the highway? <laughs> I think that you know this, those adults existed everywhere in, sc- in the school. You know, it wasn't just the guidance counselors. It was English teachers, janitors, um, 
extracurricular teachers, like some of the, the best mentors I ever had came out of the, our extracurricular uh, mm. robotics program, where again, too, like I'd always thought, well, art is where I want to go, but I'm having such a good time in this right. robotics program. Like, what does this mean? School taught me how to find the asymptote and Pythagorean's theorem, but that's not what the point of math was. Math was to teach us, can you be given A and B and extrapolate C? Can that pull from everywhere else? Um, so, you know, and part of that was, you know, finding those mentors, finding those people in the school that could help you make those choices. I was very lucky to be able to experience that in my extracurriculars and stuff that I was instantly drawn to where, you know, other people chose the guidance counselor teacher route. So yes, mm -hmm. those people exist. Um, and it's just empowering those people to help us make those decisions and even giving them the tools where if they want to help us, but they can't, is there a, a resources they can choose or aim at to give better information? Excellent. Okay, and in closing, uh, I've enjoyed this interview a mm -hmm. great deal, and I really am pleased that you were able to take time to speak with us. Um, uh, do you have a, a word of advice that you'd like to give to uh, graduating seniors or juniors uh, who are coming up uh, from the point of view of your perspective and what you've learned? Um, I would say care. Care about something, somebody, some topic. Care about something because you'll find once you start caring about something, you want to be an expert in that. And when you search for that expertise, you find those programs, those companies that are willing to pump you up. So, you know, try your hardest, care about something, and don't be afraid to go off the trail because there's some really great, excellent opportunities out there for those who are willing to search for them. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Taylor. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We hope that interview gave an opportunity for parents and students to think about what does career readiness, job training, and education look like in modern day. We know success and happiness are not pinned solely to a high school or college education, and we think that Taylor's example of a non-traditional career path is an interesting one for more students to explore. You know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we recorded these interviews over a several month period of time, and I've had time to think about them during that. And one remark that Taylor made, this, his remark that really the most important place to start is to care about something keeps coming back to me. It drives us to be better, and it's a great starting place. And I think that it, it gets to the point that you need to look about something and care about it a lot, and, and your excellence will be driven from that. I think that is, is really one of the important things for us to take from that interview. Now next we're gonna hear from uh, Alicia Brownell, 2010 uh, Shrewsbury High School graduate and uh, patrolman, patrol officer uh, for the town of Shrewsbury. We're here with Alicia Brownell, an officer of the Shrewsbury Police Department. Thank you so very much for joining us. And a, a 2010 graduate of Shrewsbury High School, so uh, it's really nice to have you here to talk a little bit about your career path and how you went from 2010 uh, finishing high school, but how you got to the police department back here in, in town. Can you tell us a little bit about your first steps after high school? Uh, yeah, after high school, I wasn't really actually sure what I wanted to do, mm. but I enrolled in Quinsigamond Community mm. College, just trying to sort it out. Um, my brother was a police officer at the time, and I was geared in the medical direction, but then, you know, him telling me about his job made me sort of want to gear towards that profession. Um, I ended up enlisting uh, in the Army Reserves in the meantime. Okay. And when I was kind of back to normal life and drilling, um, when I was trying to figure out my career, uh, I realized that policing was the job that really translated the most mm. in the military, which I love so much, so. Mm. So talk to us a little bit about your experience at community college. How did that go? Um, I thought it was really beneficial. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I point out the price just because when you think about going to big universities, you're spending all this money, and oftentimes you don't know exactly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I went there, it gave me the opportunity to, to decide, do I want to go the medical way where I was up in the air with, or do mm -hmm. I want to go towards the criminal justice route? Mm -hmm. And um, it ended up helping me because I realized what my strong parts, points were, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so and they're offering you the basic package of courses that you would have been taking in the first two years of uh, a four-year university anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the thing I th think more people should be um, 
more aware of mm -hmm. is you're going to go spend all this money at a big university to do your general core courses when you could just stay local and save the money. And particularly in Worcester, I think that transition is, is uh, quite easy uh, as far as facilitating the transition uh, over to a university, uh, the State University or WPI or Clark. All of them have programs to help uh, our students transfer directly from the community college uh, to these other schools. So that's, that's a, a great opportunity for, for uh, people and you, you uh, started off in that direction. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Can you tell us how it is that you came to be at community college and then decided to go into the Army, Re Army Reserves? So um, after I had gotten my associate's mm -hmm. degree, um, I had taken the civil service exam. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I scored pretty well, but I didn't get on the list. And I think I was a little discouraged. And you know, I was kind of sick of working my little minimum wage job. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I, I need to do something else with my life right now until yep. you know, hopefully this pans out. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. I decided at that point, you know, without telling my mom or anyone, just left it and went and enlisted, and I was gone about a month later. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really interesting point. One of the things that we have been thinking about as a school committee is when we think about um, young people making really important decisions at 17 and 18 and not really being sure, right? Um, um, do you feel like you had um, adults in your life that you could talk to about thinking about going to community college route, maybe thinking about the Army, thinking about some of these different choices that were in your head? Were there people in our community that you could look to, or is that an area where we need to be spending a little more time focusing on? Well, I mean, obviously there's people at the school, your guidance mm -hmm. counselors, and um, even just speaking to teachers or other students who know what they want to do because maybe their parents, you know, were big on college. Um, but for me, it really just came down to just my family you know mm -hmm. I was probably at the time only one of two people to actually go to college at all yeah community or any level yeah so um, I think the biggest thing is is having the family uh, you know that's experienced that to be mm -hmm. able to help you I didn't exactly have that so okay that's an interesting point because it really that is not an unusual situation at all a lot of people are first generation college where their parents did not go to college and, and the guidance uh, that others whose parents have gone to college has some value in helping them to select and to understand the quality of one uh, uh, line of study versus another. Mm -hmm. and, and there may be some value to the, the high school acknowledging that in some way and providing some, some uh, additional uh, counseling to make sure that you, you pick up on those particular uh, items that other people may be getting and not mentioning. Absolutely. I think a yeah. lot of it, too, is just figuring out how to do things. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about FAFSA. I didn't mm -hmm. know, you know, how I was going to pay for it. I kind of had to do my own research and talk to people mm -hmm. to try to sort that out. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of students, especially if you don't have the financial means to attend a big university. Right. Very important point. Yeah. You, you had mentioned that you went, um, when you started at Quinsid, you were initially thinking about medical, the medical field. Yes. Uh, and certainly we... Um, spoken to some other individuals. There's lots of hiring often in that field. How did you get exposed to that? Because um, something like that was before, a little bit before Quinn Sigmund. Was that something that happened during your high school time or working? Or One of my best friends, her mom um, was an ultrasound technician mm -hmm. and um, she let us go to a few like events with her. Okay. Um, and I just, I just liked it. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was something I could do. Turns okay. out that it wasn't for me. So. You have a different mm -hmm. kind of service <laughs> now. <Yeah. laughs> but that brings up the other point, which is career exposure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether we could do more uh, with regard to career exposure that way. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I definitely think so. I, I, I feel like when I was in high school, maybe there were other things, but I think it was mostly geared towards universities. Like, that mm -hmm. people would come in and, and talk, if I recall correctly. Um, but I think it's important for people to know, like, it's okay if you want to be an electrician just explain to people how to do it. You know, mm -hmm. if you need to get so many hours to be an electrician, mm -hmm. you should know, hey, um, on your part-time job while you're in high school, maybe you should be trying to get your hours as an apprentice doing this, mm -hmm. and then this is how you become an electrician and get your license. Mm -hmm. um, I think exposing people to other career choices that might interest them mm -hmm. is really important, and, you know, showing them how they can go about doing it. Well, I think, you know, the other thing we're, we know is that people learn at different paces. They learn at different phases of their lives. And, and for some people, you know, if they have a career they're working in, then the meaning of a lot of these otherwise abstract subjects comes to life. So, you know, the math that may have bored you in a classroom becomes interesting when you start to see it from the point of view of, 
running a business or you know completing a project. And so a lot of people will start with the, the trade and, and move on to a college degree after, mm -hmm. uh, which is, is a, a very successful uh, approach to take. When you think about yourself back at um, 18 uh, or 17 and getting close to finishing high school, and, and I think about all of the 17 and 18 year olds now at the Shrewsbury High School, is there anything that you would want to say to them as they're thinking about our system tends to push, right, and not, not just our school system, society tends to push a certain path for, for individuals, and we're spending this episode trying to explore other paths, but if you are you know, you know there's a, hand, a handful, and probably even more than a handful of them yeah. uh, in high school right now, what would you want to say to them uh, as they're thinking, should I be doing this thing that everybody else is doing? I, I think it's just important for them to break the stigma of you need to go to a four-year maybe a big accredited college mm -hmm. um, because that's what society says to do. I think it's important to know what you want to do um, and move towards that goal. Mm -hmm. And however you have to get there, if you have to go to a, a four-year college, you have to go to a four-year mm -hmm. college. But whether it's work experience or whatever, they should know that you don't just have to go to a university, you know. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, really appreciate your taking the time to share your experience with us and uh, best wishes. Thank you. Thank you for we'll see you me. around town. Yeah, 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 yeah thank you. <laughs> Alicia Brunel's story and her career path are an interesting one for more students to explore, having spent time in the military and ultimately ending up in public service. We know that now, Individuals have as many as seven different careers throughout the course of their lives, so any one moment of training is just a point in time. Next, we're going to hear from Jeff Turgeon of Mass Hires, uh, who is going to share more of a, a, a really a community-wide perspective. We've heard from two students in Shrewsbury. Now we want to get a bigger, a bigger scope and zoom out a little bit and understand the perspective of our broader Worcester County community. We're joined by Jeff Turgeon of Mass Hire, and he's going to talk to us about job opportunities that don't necessarily require a college degree. What kind of jobs are there? How well do they pay? Um, you know, what fields and the like? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for being here. Have me on here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you look at our, our local economy, um, you know, at the, at the Workforce Board, one of the things that we do is we, we basically study the job trends and we help bring partners together, whether it's the employer community themselves, plus, you know, educators, mm -hmm. uh, and then also other stakeholders that are out there, including, you know, organized labor and community groups and, and the folks that, uh, the other entities that are really supporting, helping people that, uh, you know, grow and thrive in, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, when we look at the data, it's really kind of striking that, you know, the majority of jobs in, you know, in Central Mass don't actually require a bachelor's or above. It's, mm -hmm. you know, about 74% uh, of the jobs out there that are um, uh, associates or below. So middle skill jobs, mm -hmm. if you will, you know, the technician role uh, in the support healthcare role. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, there what we're what we're seeing too is this. You know, there's this been this college for all mentality uh, that's really taken root the past uh, couple of generations now, and it's really kind of unfortunate, but it's really kind of stigmatized anyone that's working with their hands. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but some of the most brilliant people I know are are good with their hands and they're doing right. you know work with their hands, uh, but we've kind of made it made it fe made folks feel like if you're not going to college. Mm -hmm. that, you know, you as a parent, right? I've got, I've got kids and, you know, that message is like, if you're not sending mm -hmm. your kid to college, like you're, you're somehow a bad parent, right? right. That, that there's, you know, I was, I was at a conference and uh, the, the CEO of uh, Snap-on Tools, you know, multi-million dollar company. Sure. Guy come out, family business, never went to college and, and grew from within the ranks, right? Uh -huh. But he talked about how, you know, it's like you're viewed as somewhat of a failure if you're not going to college. No matter how good you become or, or where, you're, where you're at, where you're going, somehow, um, you know, if you're, not, if you're not going to college or you're not sending your kids to college, there's this real stigma there. Right. And it really kind of takes away opportunities and, and, and certainly our economy, uh, you know, requires a, a strong, skilled workforce in a lot of uh, areas that don't require, you know, the construction trades, manufacturing, mm -hmm. um, you know, retail. There's a lot of industries that, you know, you really don't need to have a college, at least to start. I think one of the guests uh, that, that you had on, um, was it Taylor maybe, mm -hmm. who talked Taylor. about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
he's kind of he's been in the industry really growing now he's he's kind of yep. getting up the and now uh he's maybe seeing that oh it'd be good to have a degree to right. kind of advance his career well now he's got a bit more resources himself right uh in a lot of companies at that point you know now they they've got a relationship with with him and they're going to want to invest in him mm -hmm. and so you know he's going to be able to get a college degree probably without taking on much debt Right. Uh, do it probably uh, at more of a, a pace that's going to you know work with his with his uh, work schedule, and then he's going to be advancing his career that way. So you know the college immediately after after high school isn't necessarily the best way for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, though, the message has been that that's not the case. That you know you need to to get to school, you know college. I wonder, Dr. McGee, just for the listener, you've shared a, a statistic with me that was really meaningful about certainly the vast majority of young people mm -hmm. from Shrewsbury are, are interested in going to college and, and, and attempt and enroll in college, but the percent that complete them. Um, can you right. remind people about that? Because it feels so, like a really important yeah. component of what you're doing. We're sending 95% of our graduates on to higher education. Uh, a small percentage of those are going to community college. Most are going to four-year schools. Mm -hmm. Of those who enter college, 80% uh, graduate within six years. So that means 20% who don't. enter college yeah. don't graduate and within six years. And that's actually a pretty high statistic. That is. Which speaks well of the Shrewsbury uh, School system right. in, mm -hmm. in, in preparing them for college. And so you're really talking about a major drop off of, of and these are, you know, as you know, college isn't cheap these days, no. and, and that's a major right. debt to take on and not to have anything to show for it. The other thing is you get a lot of people that go, they're, they're you know, they're, you know, um, uh, it's called malemployment, right? Where you, you've right. got a degree, uh. but you're not able to get a job in that field, and yes. you're, and you're going to be, you know, maybe you're, you're waiting at, at, at uh, you know, a fast food or Starbucks mm -hmm. or something, right? right? While you're waiting for something to go, you're working for a couple of years in retail or whatever, you really don't need a degree for that. Right. Uh, and unfortunately, you've got all this debt mounting. Right. Um, you know, my wife uh, has been a public school teacher for, for you know, several years now, we'll say. Uh, but, but, you know, she's, she's been paying off student loans sure. all her life, all her right. professional right. life. She's still, I think she's kind of finally, you know, finishing up. But... Mm. I mean, here's a, you know, there, it's not uncommon from what, right. from what I hear for people to, you know, be paying off that debt until... Oh, yeah. And, the, and students learn differently. So there are mm -hmm. some who are basically, they have to figure out what's the point of this. I'm not going to learn calculus just because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, I want to be able to put my knowledge to use. Mm -hmm. And so starting with a job first and then supplementing it with the education you need to advance yourself is a, a path that allows some people to be much more successful than they otherwise would. Yeah, and the other model that we that we turn to in the mm -hmm. workforce side is trying to work with employers to say, you know, when you want to invest in someone, how about looking at an apprenticeship system, right? Where you right. bring someone in, they get to learn the business a little bit, and then you bring them along with hands-on work and schooling that's kind of, uh, you know, that goes alongside it. So mm -hmm. that, you know, you, you're, you're, you're hitting certain benchmarks. And, the, you know, in the construction trades, right, you, you go from being an apprentice to like a journeyman. But in the, you know, it could be in manufacturing, could be in healthcare, could be in, in a lot of fields where, you know, you start here, you, you, you're doing the, the job day to day, but then you're also taking classes, and usually those are funded through uh, some sort of copay with an employer right. or a partner. And that's how you, you, you know, you're ramping up your skills uh, right. and your education level. Again, not taking on all that debt. Right. But at the end of the day, the company has a really strong employee that they've invested in, they've got this relationship with a really loyal employee. So. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel like, so, so some piece of this feels like the connection of what, in theory, the gap there was our vocational schools, right? And we think about vocational schools as an opportunity to be exposed to sure. different different career opportunities that um, to suggest that potentially college isn't the track for everybody, that there are other, other yeah. trades and the like, and yet our vocational students are going off to college. Well, that's, right? yeah, that's so the hidden problem with this. We still seem to have this, this message very deeply yeah. embedded in, in, certainly in our community, it sounds like we're not alone in this, where young people and their parents mm -hmm. continue to feel that that is, that is the path. Yeah. Um, and so I wonder what you think as are other, other opportunities you've seen in other communities to sort of chip away at that, or at least let people say it's okay to think differently, um, yeah. and college might be the right choice for for many of our young people, but it's okay to, to it's okay to, to try out something else. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we're trying to work with school districts on is you know having a, a career awareness pathway, um, mm. ideally starting in like middle school, but then certainly through high school, where 
you know, young people get a chance to, um, you know, hear about different, get exposure to different careers, and then really let their career, uh, you know, kind of assessment, talk, talking with their parents about right. where, what kind of yep. general career direction they might want to go, and letting that set the guide as opposed to saying, well, I'm going to put, you know, my eggs into, into going to college and then figure out what or I kind of want to do. Now, for some people, college is going to be that pathway. Yep. Right. If they're if you're picking a high tech field where, uh, or or a scientific field where it's going to require that, yes. If you know what you want, that's true. But if you don't, then you you're, then you're putting yeah. a lot of time and money at risk. Um, but the other thing that that I think students are building in themselves is is the ability to understand what they like, to focus their education on what they need, mm -hmm. and and this prepares them better for the rest of their lives because very few people today uh, graduate from college, get a job, and stay there. Yep. Everyone is in a position where they have to either acquire more education to stay up to date in their job or look for another job because their field went away. Uh, so that sort of resilience yeah. and adaptability well, and is a skill that needs to be built. And that's one of the messages we're trying to get across to parents, right? I mean, you, you know, the opportunities, say, in the construction trades or into the, into the so-called hard trades, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard to outsource a plumber, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, you, you, I mean, I'm sure you know right. what an electrician costs to bring uh -huh. out to your house, yes. right? Yes. These are great paying jobs. You go back, maybe you get some 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 business uh, uh, classes under your belt. You open up your own, you know, electrical contract. Uh, you, you know, you're going to make a great living, probably doing if you if you mm -hmm. if you like working with. I mean, they, these are great jobs. How right. they've become kind of third class jobs in our society, I don't understand because they you know they're right. they're decent jobs and they make great money. <laughs> And, and so that's and why I, you know, and they're not going to get, and yeah. you know, you speak about, well, yeah. you know, people have to, have to like reinvent themselves. You know, I've got a cousin who's, who's been in, a contractor for, for, yeah. so he's not reinventing it. He's, <laughs> he's got to learn some new techniques, some new yeah. building materials, but yeah. he loves what he's doing. He's able to stay with it right. because you can't get outsourced. You, you know, yeah. right. you're more dependent on, on, you yeah. know, your own desire. So, these, so people have to have an awareness of these opportunities, the fact that they yeah. really provide a level of security and, and an ability to focus and, and also uh, uh, capitalize on the, the uh, learning styles of a, a lot of people who uh, don't necessarily gravitate towards sitting in class and taking notes. Um, there's just a lot of reasons for people to think of these alternative paths. Sure. And for families, you know, looking at, at uh, planning beyond, uh, you know, high school, there's a lot of great uh, short-term training firms. We mentioned the community colleges. There's also a lot of like apprenticeship programs and things that are out there that are, are low cost or no cost uh, that can lead to a successful next step. Mm -hmm. And then from there, maybe you take right. a, you reassess or maybe you work with your employer and maybe you are going to head to college. I mean, just because you don't go to college immediately right. doesn't mean you're, you have to rule that out forever. That's the whole right? point. Exactly. You know. It almost seems like the European model of the gap year, right? Mm -hmm. Take a moment, take a beat, figure out through apprenticeship, through yeah. other opportunities, is this the right path before right. we begin for our private schools? We're right. talking $70,000 a year for families, yeah. right? And now we would hope they would have some other, other ways to help fund some of those things, but for many of them, they don't. And so that is an awful lot of money if you're not really Especially sure. Especially just to kind of maybe find yourself when, right. boy, and you could do that while you're, while you're right. giving back to your community and getting a few dollars in your pockets and from working exactly. somewhere. And data says one in five of you is not going to finish this, right? Mm -hmm. And as right. We, I think it's hard as a, pa as a parent myself. And that's a good, and that's like that's if you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good number. <laughs> imagine, for this community. To yeah. imagine none of us wants to think about that, that we put the effort right. in and we think college is the right thing. And when certainly society's telling parents that's mm -hmm. what you should do um, to even consider that my child might be in that in that push and I, I've pushed them there. I've been part of that. Sure. And for us, I think it's important to think about well, what should the school district be doing to also raise awareness and think about other programs that are out there to help expose kids and parents. Mm -hmm. But I think I have to, you have to change parents' mindsets too about these opportunities. And there are opp I, I think another big message here is that there are second chances. This isn't as high stakes, <laughs> you know, it, it, there are going to be people who put themselves in a position where this is all high stakes stuff. It's, you know, it, it, you, you, 
uh, you know, get into Harvard right out of high school mm -hmm. and or that's it. <laughs> but, uh, but not everyone has to expose themselves to that sort of pressure. There are lots of second and third chances in, in uh, this, yeah. uh, this uh, system that we have here. And there are a lot of opportunities that offer uh, people to, f to learn their focus before they uh, acquire their debt. I've yet to hear a college admissions person say life experience is is not a good thing, right? <laughs> they, from what I can tell, you know, right. they love seeing young people that have been out in the workplace, mm -hmm. understand a bit more about how the world works, and, mm -hmm. and they probably come in a lot more motivated because they know what they want. I think Taylor had mentioned, right. one of the other things he had mentioned is, hey, if a young person finds a passion that they, they understand why they're in the classroom, mm -hmm. it's going to help them be that much more motivated. Right. So you take some time to, to kind of see what you want out of life and, right. and where your interests are. I, I don't think any, anyone's going to hold that against you when it comes to, you know, at that point deciding whether you want to go to college or not. So. Right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, this has been a great discussion, and we've had a great opportunity to talk about uh, just alternate pathways other than the usual here in Shrewsbury, mm -hmm. high school, and then college. Uh, there are lots of opportunities other than that, and uh, we're glad that you helped us with this. Sure. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you very much. We'd also like you to take a few minutes and view a video that provides current information regarding the job market here in Massachusetts. Education is core to our economy, but in order to guide our educational systems and maximize future income, we must understand the misalignment between education and our workforce. This misalignment between degrees and job skills causes half of university graduates to be underemployed in what are called gray-collar jobs, taking positions that do not require the education they have received at a cost that is more than they can afford. Conventional wisdom suggests that a university degree guarantees a higher salary, but with rising education costs, a shrinking job market, and the oversaturation of some academic majors in the workforce, this old advice is now a myth for a majority of students. In 1960, when taking into account all jobs in the American economy, 20% required a four-year degree or higher, 20% were technical jobs requiring skilled training, and 60% were classified as unskilled. But what's the right percentage to meet the labor market demand for tomorrow? The true ratio of jobs in our economy is one, two, seven. For every occupation that requires a master's degree or more, two professional jobs require a university degree, and there are over half a dozen jobs requiring a one-year certificate or two-year degree. And each of these technicians are in very high-skilled areas that are in great demand. This ratio is fundamental to all industries. It was the same in 1950, the same in 1990, and will be the same in 2030. The college for all rhetoric that has been so much a part of the current education reform movement is often interpreted as university for all. This message needs to be significantly broadened to a post high school credential for all. So how do you position yourself for high wage in demand jobs? Let's say you were considering a career as either an electrician or a business manager. You would find that the average annual income for electricians is 51,000 only about half of the 105,000 average wage for management occupations. So at first glance, it looks as if getting a bachelor's degree in business is a no-brainer. But adding skills and ability into the picture adds a whole new dynamic. What if you have the potential to become an excellent electrician, but lack the skills and ability to be an excellent manager? Then you should be looking at projected incomes towards the bottom of the pay scale for managers and towards the top for electricians. You would then discover that electricians near the top of the pay scale make around 86000 far higher than the income of a manager near the bottom of the pay scale at 52000 Now this is just one example, but the concept is true throughout all industries. The claim that you will make more money with an increased amount of education is not necessarily inaccurate, it's just incomplete. That advice is based just on the averages, but no one is perfectly average. Everyone has unique skills, talents, and interests. In fact, the income for the top individuals in a wide variety of skilled jobs that require an industry credential or two-year degree is far higher than the average income for many occupations that require a four-year degree. In today's highly technical, knowledge-based economy, having hands-on skills and perfecting what you're good at can be more valuable than getting a degree in something simply to get one. Employers want to know what you can do and what you can do well, not just what degree hangs on your wall. 
So before enrolling in classes or deciding what you're going to do next in your life, step one is self-exploration. In addition to your interests, really analyze your talents and strengths. Step two is career exploration. Understand the jobs available, the income ranges they pay, and evaluate the skills they require. Identifying an area that appeals to your interests, skills, and the labor market may be your first career. The key is to align your interests and abilities with your first career choice and the education and training you'll need to receive. This alignment will help bring your future into focus and ensure your position at the top of the pay scale in your chosen career. As a parent and community member, what I took away from that video was that ratio, one, two, seven. That you need one person in our community who's gonna have a professional degree, two who are college, have, have received a college bachelor's degree, and as many as seven individuals supporting, uh, the, the, supporting those workers. Um, for us as a community, I think that means out of every 10 young people we have, really only three are gonna be in careers at any given point in time that require a college degree or more. Our next step uh, in this process, we're going to talk to Dr. Jane Lazat, Assistant Superintendent in the Shrewsbury Public Schools, to share what the district is doing to help prepare young people for their careers. And we're here now with Dr. Jane Lazat from mm -hmm. the Shrewsbury School District. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. happy to be here in my new role <laughs> as Assistant Superintendent for Community Partnerships and Wellbeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've heard a lot from students and, and others regarding the value of uh, alternate paths, uh, not automatically going to a four-year university. There's a lot of conversation about career exposure and the mm -hmm. like, and I know this is something that you're focusing on as well. Can you yes. tell us what you're doing? Sure. I'm working alongside colleagues and the Colonial Connections Advisory Board to really um, generate ways in which our students can learn more about different facets of organizations. And we're doing that through inviting, uh, by inviting speakers into mm -hmm. classrooms, mm -hmm. as we do pre-K through 12 and have done, mm -hmm. um, so that students have a better idea of what um, different professions mm -hmm. mean and sure. how people get there, um, from tradespeople to fire, police, um, doctors, lawyers. Mm -hmm. Real, it's about exposure, mm -hmm. and we pre-K through 12 um, for a long time have conducted interest inventories for students so that they can identify where their strengths lie and what mm -hmm. they're interested in and take it from there. Mm -hmm. um, at Oak they have something called career cruising which lines up with Naviance mm -hmm. where students go in and again they're asked a series of questions, they talk about the results, they, um, that ends with a few days of career exploration where people come in from tech specialists uh, to you know a whole variety of professions. Mm -hmm. um, really trying to send the message to students that there's not one right or wrong way to go about life after high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some students take gap years, others okay. are interested in a two-year college, four-year university, et cetera. So for those who might not know, what is Naviance? Uh, okay, mm -hmm. Naviance is a program that helps students, again, identify their strengths, okay. what they like to do, what they're good at. Mm -hmm. um, it also is very helpful as students are exploring college. Mm -hmm. Naviance will be able to generate where that student falls as far as other student applicants for community college and different universities, okay. but it also helps with the career awareness piece. And is that something that we use starting in high school? We use it starting in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the career cruising is the, the seventh, seventh and eighth grade, grade program, program, and mm -hmm. that follows Excellent. students through to the high school. Nice and early. So, so you organized an event at the beginning of the school year in which past graduates came in and told about their experience. And yes. that, that went so well. And I remember one of the uh, uh, gentlemen who presented uh, said that, you know, after casting about for a while, he, he sort of focused himself by saying he wanted to know what he liked, what he was good at, and, and yeah. what society was willing to pay him for. And if he could line those three up, which he did, yes. then uh, that would be provide him with great career guidance. I thought that, was, that uh, provided a lot of wisdom. But uh, part of this has to do, I think, with uh, the notion that 
um, people need more than just a, a menu. They need to be able to sort of see what a day in the life is. They need to be able to get a little bit more exposure. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Or what are you trying to do? Well, one goal for this year um, to accomplish between now and the end of the summer, along with uh, our Colonial Connections Advisory Board members, is to create some summer internships and mm. job shadowing opportunities for mm -hmm. students in high school. So this group of 18 people are working hard to find might be 20, 25, 30 placements for students. Um, a few members talked about rotational experiences where students might spend six weeks in an organization, yep. one week in one department, one week in another department to really get the full exposure. Mm -hmm. It's all about exposure and you talked about sharing stories and right. students learn from others right. and the stories of others. So we're really working to make that happen. So I think there's a recognition within the district that career exposure is important. Yes. We're, we're expanding our previous program of uh, exposing students to different careers starting in the seventh grade mm -hmm. to include uh, some summer internships. Yes. You've uh, brought in some graduates uh, from past years so that we can get some feedback as to just what the outcome is and, and help the, the faculty refocus uh, how they do things. So I think the, the district is, is moving along in a, a very positive direction. So thank you for being with us. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Matt. Thanks for being here. At the top of this hour, we heard uh, from one of our graduates saying the important goal was to really align what we like, what we're good at, and what society will pay for. We know that each one of those is going to require a lot of introspection, both for our young people, but also for the parents of our community in our community who are trying to figure out a best path forward for their uh, children. So we've got a lot to think about with all that we've heard. Going to college without a clear career plan may not be a good investment of time and could result in debt that takes decades to pay off. Career exposure in high school is something that we're trying to move forward and it could be an additional benefit. And vocational training does not preclude going to college, but may put some graduates into a position where they get a career exposure and finish with a credential that allows them to earn while they consider the added value of a college degree. It's important for parents and students to know that everyone should expect to retrain multiple times during their working lives. Knowing how and when to do this is a valuable perspective. Work experience before going on to college may provide a better focus on what matters. Thank you for joining us this evening.